massive down in the Caribbean, up in UK, Europe, America, Japan, all bound. And if I don't call him, him don't feel no way. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> someone's knocking at the door. Somebody's ringing the bell. Someone is knocking at the door. Somebody's ringing the bell. Do me a favor. Open the door. Let me. Her family, I come to shed some light on the system's fallacies. The way I man proceed, be an example and set the leads. So with the music, boss, we take the streets. Words on left the beat, and I say, Lo and behold, they try to sing your soul. Them leave the people for last. They run guns at the goal. No, I don't like this use, but the time for we be bold. Time for sinking at them all. So we come for take control. Feet on flaming now. Oh, as I trot along. Hey. Que los pies no fallen, que el live no falle, bienvenida, bienvenido, el efecto Dove, Cali Breeds y toda esa raza es la entrevista, es el IG Live con Black Hero desde Jamaica. Bow to tune in, bow to tune in, Black Hero. Eso es con el Green Lion Crew. Beg your pardon Pasta come into you Better move up with the talking You know the fire starting More than just a warning Warning All of the stuff we Be there up on a high Who oh, are you? Yeah. You say more they hungry Hunting every day Higher eyes Who oh, are you? Yeah. Rasta man and green lion Still I see we Never can a shop, yeah, be shop, no come run yourself for weeks and now the gully pack. Some wow. can not get no job, put them up of the med policies and give them glass and lap and 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 glass and lap Original, original, original. You hear me well, nice yeah. and clear. Yeah, you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Uh-huh. Nice and clear. Way to pull up. Let me let me accommodate myself here. Welcome, welcome to the live stream. Welcome to this interview dedicated to you, to Thank know you. you. Lulu. We have to keep the vibes, keep the vibes. Panama, you you in Panama right now. Yeah, I'm in Panama right now original from Jamaica. I'm a translate a little bit as we go in for my people in Latin America that needs to know more and everything about you, about the original man that is making things happen for the culture, let's say, around there. Hey. Black Hero desde Jamaica, anda ahorita en Panamá, viene de Portugal, anda de paseo por aquí, por allá, anda outside, como lo dice uno de sus tunes. Escuchamos uno de los tres hits del mundo reggae show de Black Hero que han estado rodando y rodando por acá, incluyendo el original con el original a Wayne Jaina desde Jamaica también, a quien le mandamos un saludote, saludote grandiote. I need to I need to recover some air because 
your tunes always hype up the vibe here and we rushing we rushing everything to have everything together and well connected to this special today is a special day for us as mexicans as latin american people and for you as a rastaman too is coronation day is dia de muertos day welcoming this special day ready to tell us everything about you right, so today is the day of the dead yes with respect to their, their ancestors basically Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right, We're right. dedicating this to yours and mine and ours and all that people that keeps guiding us and keeps inspiring us. A lot of reggae music. I have here my altar, including some of the artists that passed this, this year and, and they have marked the way for you and I on this reggae music thing. Right. But let me, let me check here the vibes. If something is... If, if the people confirming that everything's on the nice and clear, I'm ready to start a nice yeah. interview with you, a nice questionnaire with you. Si alguien nos confirma que el audio se escucha, todo bien, nice and clear. Big up Deadly Dragon Sound, out in Nueva York. Big up Two Tone Boy, desde Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Please confirm to us that you're hearing us nice and clear. Say hello to the people in the chat, Black Hero, please, so they can hear your audio too. Big up Mundo Reggae Show, Big Up Deadly Dragon, everybody that's here right now, Big Up, you know what I mean? If you're hearing us, say it's perfecto. Al cien, al cien, as we say, to the hundred, Big Up Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico, and everybody joining. <laughs> Jamaica too as well, hola, hola. Hola, hola, how's your Spanish going? You come from Brazil, a little Portugal, and then you're in Panama, I hear you say buenos dias. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna be translated for the people that doesn't speak English, so no worry, me people. Who is Black Hero? Who is this guy on the IG that is just uh, kicking out the world, one hit after another hit? Um, well, every time, every time I get this question, it, it feels like I'm reintroducing myself to myself, isn't me? It's kind of crazy, but I'm just, I just, I was trying to sum it up as like, I'm just, I was just a freedom fighter. Somebody art, just like you was just looking for purpose and a vision. So after that music became my, my medium, you know what I mean? How I express myself and how I was able to put everything that was happening around me into, you know, into an, like, an understandable form, like make people can see my world, you know what I mean? Just through my words, you know what I mean? Um, I'm from Jamaica, Waterford to be exact. Um, I'm young, I'm still in my twenties, and I'm a singer, songwriter, producer. Girls, them sugar, the youth, them. You know what I mean? So, that me everything. So, for me, it's, it's just like a ball of everything. He's like a really techie piece. <laughs> Black Hero es una persona que, como lo dice él, está representando a los jóvenes. Todavía está en sus veintes y ya es un músico, escritor, productor, cantante en muchos estilos. Es muy versátil, no lo dijo él, lo digo yo. Es muy versátil y Black Hero para él es toda la visión de lo que él quiere ser, de lo que él quiere que también todos los jóvenes sean. Es su visión y es su misión más allá de un hombre que dice que siempre que, que le preguntan esto tiene que representarse a él mismo una y otra vez, pero así es como lo sigue viendo Black Hero es la visión de la música que está creando este joven representando a los jóvenes You are a youth, representing youths, you have many facets and I was just saying in Spanish that you didn't say it, but I say it you're so versatile we were sí. just listening three tunes of your repertory that's a lot of them and most of them has visuals too mm -hmm. and i know you're behind in the, in the productions and and constructing everything we were just watching you last night live with inesta from panama and dennis who i said a huge big up just building a rhythm on the way on the yeah. way a gigante rhythm Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, fuck. Yeah, but like, that was an awesome vibe. Like, to me, that's what music is all about. Is it me? Like, you just pull up somewhere and we just create something 
with, without any explanation, no need for anything. You just create it from the raw source itself. And it came out beautiful. And I mean, today we're linking up again with a few other virgins, you know, Kenny man. I want to link up with um, Italian, Somali. I want to hit up with all the big people in Panama and just create a bridge the gap, you know, make it much easier for Jamaica and us to, and Panama to kind of, you know, just create again, you know what I mean? One, two. It's, it comes naturally, I know, because I know the history of reggae in Panama and mm -hmm. it's been huge for dance hall in many styles. And I'm so glad that you guys connecting and you're working with Ainesta. Lo veíamos ayer trabajando con Ainesta, construyendo un rhythm nada más así al, al chas chas. Y, y se viene una combinación con ellos. Vigo para, para Denis, que, que anda con Black Hero, van a conectar con Italia, en Somalí, más gente de Panamá, que les mandamos todo el respeto del mundo. Vigo para toda esa gente conectándose por aquí. Dice, así sale la música, debe salir natural y fluir natural. Y con comes natural and it just flows like that but how did you discover that you can just build over the flow in in an instant your music when do you recall for the first time like chatting and doing and i know it's, it, it comes natural probably in coming yeah. from jamaica we, we will think but how was that first memory you have connecting with reggae music um first all right two things the first memory I have connecting to reggae music was just being young and hearing what my grandmother used to play and like what, what radio stations there's like RJR was her favorite radio station and they always used to play a certain set of music on a Saturday and then a certain set of music on Sunday so each day had its own like genres within Jamaican music you know what I mean today was dancehall Saturday's more dancehall Sunday's more um lovers rock or roots then you know in the week is a mixture of things so it's like that's my first memory like my youth like grandma used to have us like wiping the floor with the shamai and the the polish and i used to just remember the music like oh dance into it but um me personally you know discovering the talent like to instantly like create music for me i feel like honestly because of growing up in the church because of playing music at school because of always having this inner fascination with music even before i knew i was going to be a musician i was always fascinated by it always listening to music every single day from the day i was born till now i've been listening to music every single day so i feel like i was actually on to my purpose for a longer time and i've just been absorbing absorbing all of the skills and the talent and the music and everything that the world has to offer and kind of just Practicing it, practicing it, practicing it. Subliminally, to not even knowing, like, singing my favorite song while trying to harmonize it when I was younger, like, from my favorite Bob Marley, singing it in a different key was practice, you know? Everything was training without even knowing. So by now, it's like, it's like I just hear it, like, instantly. Like, it's really instant for me. Like, as I hear it, it doesn't matter what sound or what thing. is like my mind just knows exactly what to do. So, I don't know. It's like... This subliminal kind of training Ja had me in, you know, I didn't even know it. I didn't even notice it until now, you know. Yeah. Pues no recuerdo un momento exacto, así dice que siempre subliminalmente ha estado practicando y practicando su talento desde sus canciones favoritas de Bob Marley, cantándolas en, un, en una clave diferente y, y recuerda así como los mexicanos, su abuelita lo ponía a hacer el quehacer y atrapea el piso y así recuerda la diferente, los diferentes estilos de música jamaicana que escuchaba entre semana, en sábados o en domingos, pero pues vivo para la abuelita y vivo para los abuelitos y abuelitas de todos que nos ponían a hacer el quehacer y nos dieron esa costumbre de hacer el quehacer con música, seguramente te identificas con eso. It's a tradition for us that mm, the kids start doing or always remembers and doing in the shores of the house with music. Like you cannot do it without music. So long live to, to the grandmas, the grandpas that give us that tradition that teaches music through the shores and responsibility too through the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really where it started. Big up grandma for sure. You just say you used to change the key and practice naturally, subliminally with your favorite tunes, including your Bob Marley tunes. Wh which ones were those tunes that you remember singing or exactly what songs of Bob Marley? All right. The exact songs of Bob Marley, like they're, they're really like, because his, his catalog is massive, like and most of his songs are hit songs. So 
the ones you usually hear in Jamaica a lot is One Love, you know, Three Little Birds and Turn Your Lights Down Low. So those three songs are kind of like me in a nutshell, you know, aside for the, for the ladies. You know, something <laughs> like One Love, One Heart. And then Three Little Birds, like, it's very deep. If you, if you, if you listen to the lyrics in different ways, in different understandings, in different consciousness, it gives you different messages. You know, what the significance of the three birds, the journey from the doorstep, you know, everything is just like, so that's me. Like, I'm always trying to make music with a little bit of mystery and medicine in it. I vibe that. So those three songs for me are my, like, Bob Marley go-to song, isn't it? Like, for me. But other musicians was in it as well. Aini Kamosi played a huge part. I discovered him because he was doing more of the hip-hop thing with his thing. Like, you know, he had hip-hop albums. I'm like, what? Young discovering that, and that was cool. Um, there was also Sizzler was a big part of it. You know, we used to, the realest thing is, like, the, probably the one of the reggae albums I've listened from stop to but I'm top, all over, like left, right, center, you know, <laughs> and and Buju Bant, and of course, um, Inner Heights album, yeah, man. And like, there's a couple things as youth, as much as I did, fascinated with music. So, a lot of youth probably just listen to one and two songs, may listen to like albums and anything, you know? yeah. Se acuerda de los álbums de Buyu Banton, se acuerda de los álbums de Cisla Kalonji, Aini Kamosi, su top 3 de Bob Marley, especialmente Three Little Birds, que dice que si la escuchas en diferentes conceptos y desde diferentes perspectivas, siempre vas a tener una versión diferente, aunque todas las canciones y el repertorio grandísimo de Bob Marley siempre se escuchó en Jamaica, ese era su top 3 de canciones y, y continúa con con la enseñanza pues de los grandes también que traían ya la influencia más de hip hop incluyendo a Inika Mossi en aquellos tiempos when was then that with all this experience subliminal experience you get to record in the studio we i remember i i can share my first experience watching you and i'm sure a lot of people watching right now must be in the bbc one extra video with lila Ike, with leno banton yourself and shensia four of you guys are just kicking the world with your music and your message was that one of the first experiences i don't think so but share with us the story of first experiences in the in the public's eye like you know that's that's probably one of my first biggest moments viral or uh, anything like that, that you know what i mean but um the, my it was way before that my first time in a studio like the bbc extra was about 2017 there about and i was in studios from about 2013 about there so my first studio recording was 2013 so from then till about 2016 was me developing so nobody really knew me like that but i had like little underground songs and you know like but it was really not until like 2016 i really started to surface a lot more then by 2017 the bbc thing extra happened then more support from the industry came in you know from different walks of life you know a protege a reggae villa you know all these different places you know by 2017 again we were on in on tour did reggae jam reggae gear you know so it was like Right around the time of the one extra, that was my that was when I was getting in the publics. Like everybody was really kind of getting to see what I can do you now. You know what I mean? So I was basically training for that moment. So yeah, I'm really happy. BBC One Extra went all over the world, all over the world. You know uno de sus primeros videos virales, dice, es precisamente con el cual yo empiezo a topar su música y probablemente muchos de ustedes, como lo decía, es esa combinación en la que lo vemos muy chiquitito, todavía es muy joven, pero estaba mucho más chiquitito. Fue 2016, 2017, junto con Lila Aike, Shensia y Leno Banton, los cuatro ya, todos unos profesionales de distintos, de distintos estilos del reggae, pero fue mucho antes de eso que pisa un estudio por primera vez vez, probablemente unos 3, 4 años antes, pero sí fue su primera aparición pública masiva que de ahí pues seguramente sabemos ya que le, que le abrió muchísimas puertas. You have several projects, several EPs which ones, the, the studios the producers, now you work with international producers you're in Panama and you went on tour and everything, but the beginning 
who we have to give thanks for supporting you first in those studios. Ah, oh, I will. Well, not even first. It's the same people I work with right now. Well, you know, nice. I have to pick up like um, my bridging shutter bigs. I have to big up um, greatest. You know, that's like he produced Young Boss and a lot of the records. Like a lot, most of the records right now. Um, I have a big up Coastal Kings, isn't it? I have a big up Capone, in name Bossway right now, Bossway Visuals. These, those were the youth. I was very, I was working mainly with the youth. Like I was really big on working with my generation. For some strange reason, like from 2012, I just knew like all of us was gonna be lit. Like I know I was gonna be lit, but <laughs> all of us was gonna be like something in life. We were all too talented, you know. When me and Leela and Wayne J and Raya Blue and Runkus and Five Star and Rasai and all the way rolling together, it felt like a monumental thing to me, isn't it? Like, and we're all growing and the music and the world, you know what I mean? So I always kept it within that generation in the beginning. Like I was working with even young producers like JLL, you know what I mean? Just just young people like doing features with artists like Ayatash and you know what I mean? You know, just young people. And so now is the time I'm really working with more people outside of that, like, you know, like a Teflon from Zinc Fence or even like working with um, a Suku Ward or a Tony Kelly, even like, you know what I mean? We're trying to like build it further and further out, you know what I mean? So, but the young youths, I really give them the, you know what I mean? Them are the first one I'm really working with, you know? Big up to them, big up to all the youth generations. Es, es, es un joven que ha trabajado mayormente con su generación, le decía yo. Ahora ya trabaja con artistas internacionales, a quien hay que darle gracias por apoyarlo en, en esos tiempos. Pues gracias a JL, gracias a Greatest, que, que es la misma gente con la que sigue trabajando en este momento y siempre se ha envuelto dentro de su generación, pero también ha trabajado en proyectos grandísimos. You have been around your generation and, and supporting your generation just the release with Wayne J, a full EP with Wayne J, who is a youth that is doing great too. You both has amazing and clear message to the youths too, but you add, so have work with big names. You have more than two tunes on the UB40 recent album. You have combinations yeah, just... <laughs> How was the experience for you? Were you familiar all your life with you before a music catalogy? What that represents to you and to your music? Um, all right, the first question. I was, I, I, I did, but I wasn't aware when I met them or when I connected with them that I knew it. I linked to them and then I was like, hmm, I see that their numbers was big and I was like, hmm, this name sounds familiar. And then I hit up my mom and be like, yo, mom, you know, you be <laughs> yes, man, there's some big British women. And I hit up other people and they're like, yo, and then I, they, and I started listening to the music. I'm like, oh, red wine. Like, you know, red, red wine. Like, that used to play on the radios, isn't me? That's like, they're big. So I'm like, oh, snap, I know this. So I didn't know at the first connection, like, because it was really um one of the band members' sons really, like, connected with my music and introduced it to the, the band and they're like, yo, this is awesome, you know what I mean? And they sent like three rhythms and said to pick one and I just did all of them. I did all of them. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> I'm passing up an opportunity, you know what I mean? Like this, I'm just gonna put my all in, isn't me? And it worked out like, you know, three songs. Oh no, you before the album, that's kind of, that's still like crazy to me, isn't me? Tiene tres canciones en el álbum más reciente de UB40. Le pregunto si ya tenía, ya estaba familiarizado con la música o qué significa para él este proyecto. Dice que cuando lo contactaron sabía que, que ya los conocía y, y por supuesto Red Red Wine era uno de los tunes que, que de volada le sonó familiar. Pero fue y le preguntó a su mamá si los conocía y su mamá le dijo, ¿What? Por supuesto, UB40, grandes representantes desde UB40. 
UK, que, que se juntaron con la generación joven recientemente y el que más combinaciones incluidas en este álbum con UB40, muy simbólico por cierto, pues es este jovenazo de aquí mismo, Black Hero with Three Tunes, with UB40, I'm gonna show you something because I, I, I am like coming from UK is a big influence for, for reggae in the world and, and that music is probably easier to digest in this side of the world because the the English is more clear. I'm gonna show you something to just for you to have an idea how how I excited I was to find you three tunes in, in that album. Thanks, sure. You see this? <laughs> is that a, um, that's it. This is the bag of the radio, the bag of the radio with you before it. Oh, snap. I have a couple more, but but it was definitely something that they used to sound in my family since we were youths here on the frontier of Tijuana. So <laughs> it, it probably means it, a lot for people that that hear you before it to find you is going to be happy to know more about you through this interview for the Mundo Reggae Show. There's more coming. There's so much tunes to hear, so much videos to see. Yeah. You, I was, I was saying, and tell me that I, I would like to wait for you to be with Wayne to hear the story of your works together. But I guess you can give me your experience of working this EP of two young promises of Jamaica. Straight. Um, Wayne Jay, Wayne Jay, I'm calling him a little big brother, you know, because he like at times he's he, he's much he moves much mature, you know, because he was the first artist to ever bring me out on a stage, like ever in my life and he's the first artist that was around. I didn't need to be around just to be of see people like run down an artist and tear off him clothes and <laughs> weekend, you know and all these different things. Like I was able to see it. Or even before I had no career before me before Black Black Hero, before yes. that. I was just able, I was able to see what it was like to be, you know, famous in a sense. Like you know what I mean? Because Wayne J is big in Jamaica when he was really young and doing the runs. So it's like, full circle now, it almost feel like everything come back around to a full circle and know that I have my, like, you know, have a career and he's there and, yo, we can just link up and be like, yo, Wayne J, forward, come do this and we'll just mash up the world, you see me? Like, <laughs> it kind of feel like, like a super, like a super team, you see me? Top team, like, it feel like a very, very powerful thing. So the whole process was... Not to give it any credit, but was thanks to the, the pandemic, isn't it? You know, the big C. Um, we were at home. I was just like, yo, what was everybody up to? So I link up back. Then it's greatest again, as I said, who produce more, well, all of that. Me and him executively produced the project, isn't it? So along with Bob Riggin. And um, we just made some songs. The first two songs we made were original and young boss. And then I was just like, yo, if they don't like these two songs, we're not even going to project. Like, let's just put out these two songs first. And then by the time we put out Young Boss, you know, Skilly Bang remixed it, you know, just being a G. And the rest was history. Like, we had to put out the project after that, you know what I mean? So it was, it's one of the realest moments. Again, we just pull up at the house, just like what you see we do it yes, um, with Nesto in Panama. We just pull up. We ain't just pull up, we'll play yeah, some rhythms. Yeah, yeah. We just a DJ, we just have vibes and writing. Wayne's father is a big part of the writing sessions too. He helped write majority of ruler and helped structure the songs too yeah. as well. So it was a team effort. It was almost like a writing camp for New Millennium, isn't it? So that was just a family a, a experiment done with the family and it came out great. You know what I mean? Yeah. New Millennium es un EP que tiene con Wayne J, que seguramente si escuchas el mundo reggae lo has oído sonar cada uno de los tunes. La mayoría tienen video oficial. Dice que su experiencia con Wayne J, pues lo llama su hermano pequeño, aunque para él es más maduro y más grande que él, tiene más experiencia que él y es muy grande ya en Jamaica desde muy chiquitito. Tú lo conoces también a través del mundo reggae. Tenemos entrevista con él desde que era un, un chamaquito. Ya lo vemos ahora crecidito y, y bien acompañado 
dice que la primera experiencia de Black Hero en un escenario se la dio el original Wayne J, a quien le mandamos un saludo y todo el mismo respeto que le está mandando Black Hero, quien dice que gracias, pues no por darle crédito, pero gracias a la pandemia, pues tú, se, se juntaron y empezó a hablarle a, a la gente, a ver quién andaba disponible, a ver qué proyectos traían, y pues junto con Wayne J le hablaron a The Greatest, que anda por ahí de tour con él, y los primeros tunes que produjeron fueron Young Boss y Original, dos grandes tunes de este EP, que pues viene con, con un remix también de Young Boss con Skillibank, otra promesa del de dancehall nuevo proveniente de Jamaica. After this new millennium EP and several hits that have came after that. <laughs> Oh. It's hits after hits after hits after hits. Big of the mind behind you. Big of the mind on your side always. Long time. Come say hi. Come say hi. Yeah, man. Documenting yeah. There each and every step. <laughs> Saludos, saludos a toda la gente desde Tijuana, Baja California, México. Estamos en vivo y en directo con una de las jóvenes promesas de Jamaica. En este momento se encuentran en Panamá. Han estado trabajando en el estudio con Ainesta, convivieron un poquito con Chiqui Dobbs. Le mandamos saludos también por allá. Van a seguir grabando y trabajando por ahí. Y pues tiene, tiene más. Your, your most recent release is Cool Runnings, is a vibe, is, is just what people want in the market right now, that style. Tell me about your versatility. Do you just love all styles and formats of yeah. music, of Jamaican music? I'm the, I'm the journalist youth, you know. I leave people to name the music. Like, I'm done with that. Like, I just want to. Like, I'm like Thomas Edison. I really want to keep capturing lightning in a bottle. Like, I just. I want it to be special each time. I don't want you to can guess what I'm going to do next. Like, oh, because I did it not easy. Oh, I'm going to do four more it not easy. Or because I do cool runnings. Or because I do feet don't fail. Or now you're being the other. Or a new millennium. You feel like it's always going to be me and a way and say, or no, it's flavors. You know, variety is the spice of life. So, yeah, for just kind of, I don't know. So, me can't sit on my playlist, can't have one set of music all day, like. So right now a little bit of hip hop, then you know next few hours is a little bit of you know, then we're in Panama we listen a little bit of Colombian music and, <laughs> done. and it's just that mixture keeps us vibrant, keeps us excited, keeps us electric, you know, keeps us hopeful. So yeah, if we listen to one thing over and over it becomes kind of monotonous. So I want it to be that kind of way with my music. Every time you get me it's like, oh that's that's different, that's something. Okay, cool. Dice que no quiere que su música encaje en un solo playlist que puedas escuchar todo el día. Le encanta ser versátil y que no puedas predecir lo que viene, no porque haya hecho un tune Rasta, Higher Haze o sus primeros tunes, o porque haya hecho Cool Running, sin Afrobeat, Dancehall Style, significa que eso es lo mismo que vienen. Si tú escuchas New Millennium, hay, un, hay una variedad de rhythms que, que monta tremendamente junto con Wayne Jay. Si tú escuchas todo su repertorio, futures o no, originales o no, siempre siempre obtienes realmente una vibra diferente y siempre es una vibra muy alta que, que prende, que prende la fiesta. It's always a turn of the vibes, turn of the party vibes, even when you are writing in different styles of rhythms. We were listening some of them. We've been listening some of them on the Mundo Reggae Show from your last tune, Cool Runnings, for the first ones, all the EP with, with Wayne J, all the, even the, the great, great hit that I, a lot of people was asking me if I was going to ask you and make you sing your, your Half Point remake of ah. the Greetings, <laughs> Greetings, Greetings. I just started to sing in life. Oh man, that song is that song is powerful. That, song. that is that was a good representation of the history. Hands I bring from Jaui to all ragamuffin. Uwe, oh my yo! Yo, big up all fight and the way of death. 
big up to Alpine, big up para uh, myself photography, special request también de Rastafani photography, es el hit reciente de, de Black Hero en, en el área, en Tijuana, it's a hit in TJ, it's a hit in Mexico City, it's a hit for all reggae lovers, original reggae lovers, you are truly representing the original vibes of reggae music and also the message. What is your, mis your mission when you are writing your lyrics? Um, That's a good one. <laughs> I'll right, just give it a secret. Is it me? Cause it's, it's supposed to be discovered, but I guess we're here now. You know, it's a brand new world. You know what I mean? That's true, did I say? Yeah, but see it now, yeah? See now, yeah? It is. Um, but yo, we just want to have a conversation. Like, I feel like, even though it's so, it's weird. I'm bad at communicating, like around me in my real, like personal life. But I want the music. It's like I'm trying to help myself, so I'm trying to help the world too. I feel like we all need to have more conversations. Like, we all need to. That's how we're gonna bridge the gap. If I understand your perspective. You understand mine. It's almost like you're finding a bit, like more pieces of the puzzle to this whole thing. Not just this one thing you're doing, but this whole thing. Like you have a piece of the puzzle. I have a piece of the puzzle. My version of a piece of the puzzle. The, the random guy down there that sells me the fish food that has a piece of the puzzle. And the more we talk, oh, I put your piece of the puzzle in with that piece. Of, then the picture gets much clearer. You know what I mean? Like you can see what the map is and. So I just want everybody to talk. So when I sing a song like Love or I sing a song I like Feet Don't Fail, it's like to have that conversation, isn't it? When I say mama, when I say stuff like cool runnings, when I be like, it's not easy. Everyone level you know, these songs are conversations, isn't it? That's really it. Para él es todo acerca de, de crear conversaciones y se nos va a dar el secreto, pide permiso a ver si nos puede dar el secreto y nos da el secreto, eso es lo que es, dice que aunque es un poquito malo en su vida personal con la comunicación, para él su música es ese medio donde puede realmente comunicarse y, y y dar su parte del rompecabezas. Dice, yo tengo una parte del rompecabezas, tú tienes otro que nos estás viendo, y cada quien juntándonos y creando conversaciones, cuando habla de Cool Runnings, cuando le habla a su mamá, cuando habla de amor, cuando habla de la cultura rasta, cuando habla de la calle y de la fiesta en Jamaica, eh, quiere crear estas conversaciones contigo y, y que te enteres tanto de su parte de su vida y que te identifiques, es como hablarse a él mismo también, identificarse a él mismo con su música, What is the next step for you? What is the next step after writing, producing, after EPs, after touring? I'm very eager to... Uh, there's two things really on my mind. One, I would love Bobsy Grange willing and Ja. They don't know more, keep a show. In a Jamaica, like, I would love to keep my own personal show, no, my show, finding like a Black Hero show in Jamaica, like with my band and me. Make everybody just come get the full vibes and see what this youth is really about, isn't it? And then the next thing really is dropping a, dropping a project, project time, project time. Like that I've done so much like absorbing and culture changing and time traveling because flying is kind of like time traveling. You're moving from one time zone. You're here in Sunday. <laughs> next country, you're back at Friday. Like I was just at Sunday. Oh my, Friday. Like, oh, okay. So I, I, I want to put all of that out as a body of work. All the things I've learned in love, in business, in life, in friendships, in experience, and just put it in a, in a, you know what I mean? So because this is a very special interview and you made special arrangements for me, the name of the project is Man on a Mission. So I'm a man on a mission, you know what I mean? And the project, I got explained that. El nombre de su próximo proyecto lo da por acá en Exclusive. Es un hombre en una misión. Man on a mission. Sus próximos planes para empezar es pues poner todo esto, aterrizar todo esto que ha estado aprendiendo, viajando por el tiempo. Dice porque un día aterrizas en viernes y luego regresas al jueves o, y viceversa. Ahorita se ha de sentir en casa porque está justo a la hora de Jamaica y tenemos nada más dos horas de diferencia. Pero pues estás viajando en el tiempo y también estás 
aprendiendo de toda esa gente. Entonces dice, es tiempo de un proyecto sólido, de un proyecto, me imagino que está refiriéndose a un álbum oficial de Black Hero. Y lo otro es pues llevar su show completo, sólido, con una banda respaldándole el barrio en su barrio. Dicen por ahí que nadie es profeta en su tierra, él va que vuela para profeta en su tierra y ese es su, su primer paso a seguir ahorita después de esta pandemia, es presentar un show sólido con una banda en Jamaica. We have a saying here that nobody's prophet in their line and I am saying that you are way that flying to to that place to being a prophet in your land because i can see the the feedback i can you know i'm i'm just creeping with reggae around the world just for the show and to communicate and people and yeah. i can see the the answer of the youths of the same artists to supporting to each other i think it's an interest time for reggae music especially from jamaica because Ray has grown so much in the world. How do you feel as a Jamaican to see reggae being such a huge thing in every corner of the world? It's, it was like, it, it freed me from, from mental slavery. <laughs> Bob say like, seeing that freed me from a type of slavery, my mind was under when it comes to just being like Jamaica, I love it to my heart, but it consumes a specific type of music more. You know what I mean? So seeing seeing the world like this and seeing what especially Bob Marley has done, like, no joke, like it makes it makes me feel special again because when you're in a country of like where everybody's special, it might seem normal, so nobody pays it any mind. But when you're walking amongst people and they literally just treat you with a love like they love you like their own you know what i mean that means something that even means more to me than fame like you know it's a thing we have to cherish it's something we actually have to protect like and i wish i just want every artist from jamaica to embrace that when they come abroad you're not just representing yourself you're representing every single one of us because thanks to those before us it's a real tangible thing being jamaica is a tangible thing Like, and we have to protect that. We have to like cherish it. So right now, I'm just do my best to re-energize, reinvigorate, bring back that energy again that people just just want, just want to mess with reggae and dancehall again from the highest level. You see me? I want to contribute my part to that. So seeing it is definitely believing it. I can't and I can't believe it. Like I literally can't believe that. <laughs> Aunque lo ve, no lo cree, dice, aunque lo ve, no lo cree, ver que, que el reggae y que el mensaje inicialmente de Bob Marley se ha vuelto tan grande, tan inmenso y tan significante alrededor del mundo, lo libera de la esclavitud mental que puede llegar a tener en Jamaica, donde se consume, pues precisamente solamente ciertos tipos de reggae en este momento, cuando la raíz y, y los rhythms originales y la esencia está sonando y se está creando mayormente en otros países, esto lo, lo inspira a, a seguir compartiendo ese mensaje uh, con sus compatriotas jamaquinos de que hay que proteger el reggae music. You have to serve and protect the message, the, the authenticity of reggae music. I think truly that's one of the things that represents your music and the message that comes to your music. You, you're working with the evolution of rhythms and styles, but you're keeping the the mission of original from reggae, and that's something that, that for sure people keep can keep looking forward to somebody there from New York saying that you're bigger than you think that he's saying to you in New York. I have friends in Spain that we're looking forward to, to know more about you on this interview from the whole parts of Mexico, people in Hawaii too, that that's gonna know your name. Every, every, every yes. corner of the world that knows reggae music should know Black Heroes music. What's your message before saying goodbye to these people? in following your way in Panama to enjoy your day. What do you have to say to all these people joining us? The message is Miss Lulu is very, very real. She has a beautiful spirit. You know, she did this very last minute for us and I just want to thank her and thank Greatest for uh, making this happen. You know what I mean? You don't know. Um, and just look out, Mexico, everywhere we're coming. We're, um, we're bringing the music, we're bringing the, the family. Um, Don't be afraid to tell your, your local radio stations to play some black heroes. 
in your um local promoters. Tell them we're here. <laughs> we're not expensive. We have good hearts. And we're there, man. And we're just vibes. Just love. Peace. Love to everybody. Available for drop plates, available for tunes, <laughs> available for touring the world. So Mexico is waiting for you. <clears throat> yeah, man. Last minute thing, last minute arrangement with long time awaiting to connect and wow. to know more about your history. I know that there's many, many years and steps and, and stuff to do to work on the minute and with plants and everything. Wish you the best luck coming back to Jamaica. Wish you the best luck with that project and presenting your music with your band in Jamaica. Long live to Black Heroes Music, to the greatest. We, we will keep waiting for you here in Mexico. All right, love, love. Volvemos en un ratito, mi gente. Nos despedimos del Black Hero. Yo me conecto en unos minutitos para el especial del Día de Muertos. Tengo mi altar por acá. Ahorita la rasta Fanny te lo va a mostrar. Anda por acá compartiendo conmigo una de las últimas sesiones. Quedan 60 días de este 2021. Black Hero para el Mundo Reggae Radio Show. Saludos para ti, para ti y para ti también.